While 1 Corinthians 7 verse 5 presents fasting as a practice of temporary abstinence for dedication to prayer, other pages of scripture present us with countless examples and instructions about fasting that reveal its importance in spiritual life. This act of devotion, far from being a mere religious formality, is a profound expression of seeking repentance and a desire for deeper communion with God. The Bible offers a broad view of this practice, demonstrating how different biblical characters have resorted to fasting in critical need, important decisions, and seeking purification. Do you happen to know why one should fast? Let's try to answer this question. In this video, I invite you to join our community if your heart yearns to unravel the mysteries that traverse time and sacred scriptures. Subscribe now and activate the bell so you'll be notified about our future journeys through divine knowledge. In the Old Testament, fasting is often associated with mourning and repentance. A notable example is King David, who fervently fasted while praying for the healing of his son, Satya Samuel 12:16. Here, fasting is presented as an act of humility and supplication before God a means of expressing David's seriousness in his petition and his deep repentance. At another time, we see the prophet Jonah proclaiming a fast in Nineveh, leading the entire city to fast as a sign of repentance, which resulted in God's mercy upon them. Jonah 3, 5 to 10. These episodes illustrate how fasting can serve as a powerful expression of contrition and a desire for realignment with God's will. Beyond repentance, fasting is also a practice for those seeking divine guidance and intervention. In the book of Acts, we find the early church fasting and praying before making important decisions, such as selecting and sending missionaries, Acts 13, 2 and 3. This act of abstention not only demonstrates the dependence of the apostles on divine guidance, but also prepares their hearts to receive and act according to that guidance, emphasizing fasting as preparation for service and mission. Fasting is also presented as a means of spiritual strengthening and preparation to face challenges. Jesus fasted for 40 days before being tempted by Satan in the desert, Matthew 4, 1, 11, a period of intense communion with the Father that prepared him to resist the temptations that would follow. In this context, fasting is an example of the need for spiritual strengthening and inner purification to face trials and fulfill divine purpose. In addition to individual examples, collective fasting also plays an important role in Scripture as an act of unity and solidarity before God. Examples include the fast proclaimed by Esther in a time of great danger for the Jewish people, Esther 4.16, gathering the community in prayer and fasting for deliverance and divine protection. These moments of collective fasting highlight the strength of the faith community united in purpose and supplication to God. Exploring the biblical basis of fasting, it becomes evident that this practice is much more than a physical discipline it is a rich and complex expression of faith that permeates the believer's relationship with God, with oneself, and with the community. Biblical fasting is a call to self-examination, humility, dependence on God, and renewed commitment to His will and purposes. Each episode of Fasting in Scripture invites us to recognize the presence and sovereignty of God in our lives encouraging us to seek a deeper and more meaningful communion with the Creator. Fasting, in its essence, emerges as a practice deeply rooted in spiritual purification and personal reflection. This millennia-old tradition, adopted by various religious traditions around the world, serves not only as a means of disciplining the body, but more importantly as a path to cleanse the soul and renew the spirit. At the core of this practice is the pursuit of simplicity, the stripping away of layers of excess that often obstruct our spiritual vision, allowing us to confront our vulnerability and dependence. Purification through fasting is not limited to the physical dimension. 
It penetrates the depths of being, inviting introspection and self-examination. In this state of voluntary deprivation, the faithful are encouraged to reflect on their actions and thoughts and confront the areas of their lives that are out of alignment with divine teachings. This process of introspection is crucial for identifying and eradicating vices and spiritual barriers that hinder personal growth and deepen the relationship with the Creator. Thus, fasting as a tool of purification facilitates heightened awareness of God's presence in stillness and simplicity. By fasting, the noises of daily life that often suffocate the gentle voice of the Spirit are silenced allowing the faithful to listen and perceive God in ways that the routine, filled with distractions, hardly allows. This spiritual clarity acquired through abstinence opens space for a more intimate and meaningful communion with God, where supplications, thanksgivings and adorations flow from a purified and focused heart. Fasting also offers a unique opportunity to practice humility, recognizing one's frailty and need. This humility, forged in the acknowledgement of total dependence on God for all things, is an essential component of spiritual purification. By fasting, the faithful remember that beyond physical bread, they need the spiritual food that only God can provide. This recognition leads to a deeper surrender and renewed faith in the provision and sovereignty of God. Fasting, according to the Bible, is not merely abstaining from food for a time. It is much deeper than that. It is a sacred communication moment. In Isaiah chapter 58, God speaks clearly about the kind of fasting He has chosen. It is not an act to show others how spiritual you are. It is not to be a display of your faith. It is, above all, an intimate act between you and God. Biblical fasting involves humility, it must come from the heart, it is about breaking our spirit before God, seeking His face and His will for our lives. Isaiah teaches us that the fasting God desires loosens the chains of injustice, unties the cords of the yoke, frees the oppressed, and breaks every kind of yoke that is a fast that turns into concrete actions of love and justice. But how do we do this in practice, right? It starts with intention. First of all, your heart has to be in the right place. Fasting is not a diet. It's not to lose weight. It's a sacrifice, a spiritual offering you make to God, and that has to start with the intention of the heart. If it's not there, fasting loses its meaning. So choose a reason for your fast. It can be a special request, a moment of seeking direction repentance or intercession for someone. Take it to God in prayer before you begin. Make your fast a constant prayer where every moment of hunger reminds you to lift that request to God. During the fast, keep your focus. It's easy to get distracted, to think about food, to look at the clock, counting the hours until it's over. But remember, the focus of fasting is spiritual, not physical. Use this time to intensify your Bible reading, your prayer, and your study of the Word. May this time of fasting be a time of spiritual enrichment. And remember what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6. When you fast, don't make a spectacle of it. It's not for everyone to see and think you're the most spiritual one around. Fast in secret, and your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. The true value of fasting lies in your personal and intimate relationship with God, not in the approval of others. It's also important to take care of your body during the fast. God has given us this body as a temple of the Holy Spirit, so we need to take good care of it. If you're going to fast for long periods, prepare yourself physically and spiritually. And of course, if you have any health conditions, talk to a doctor beforehand. God wants our hearts. He doesn't want to put us in danger. When ending the fast, do it with gratitude. Reflect on the time spent with God, on the lessons learned, 
on how your spirit feels renewed. And of course, when returning to eating, do it gradually. The body needs time to adjust. And remember that fasting is not an end in itself. It is a means of drawing closer to God, of aligning with His will for your life. True fasting, the one that pleases God, is accompanied by actions, it's a lifestyle that reflects the love and compassion of Christ for others. So, dear brothers and sisters, may our fasting always be a reflection of our desire to be closer to God, to live a life that honors Him and serves others. May every moment of hunger be a reminder of our spiritual appetite for more of God in our lives, and may through our fasting and prayer we be transformed, becoming more and more like Christ, our greatest example. Fasting, therefore, goes beyond denying food. It becomes an act of faith, an exercise in detachment from earthly needs and desires in favor of a burning desire for God and His righteousness. This spiritual purification and renewal are essential not only for personal growth, but also for the strengthening of the community of faith. By sharing fasting experiences and the resulting transformations, believers can encourage one another building a network of spiritual support that reflects the love and mercy of God. In summary, fasting emerges as a powerful practice of purification and reflection, a journey leading to true spiritual freedom and inner peace. By engaging in this practice, believers embark on a journey of rediscovery where the stripping away of the physical illuminates the path to spiritual enrichment. This process of purification is not an end in itself, but a means to achieve greater closeness with God, a deeper communion with the divine that nourishes the soul and renews the heart. Let us also adhere to fasting accompanied by prayers, which constitutes a powerful spiritual practice that strengthens faith and intensifies communication with the divine. This combination not only draws the individual closer to God, but also amplifies the effectiveness of prayer, serving as a means to achieve clarity, guidance and strength in times of need. When fasting, the believer sheds dependence on earthly pleasures and needs, redirecting focus and energy to the spiritual realm where the battle against temptations and life's challenges is fought. The act of fasting, when accompanied by prayer, demonstrates total surrender to God's will, expressing unwavering faith in the Creator's ability to provide, guide, and intervene in the believer's life. This practice serves as a physical reminder of humanity's need for God, not only for physical sustenance, but more importantly for spiritual and emotional sustenance. By temporarily giving up food, one of the most basic desires the believer opens up to receive the bread of life that Jesus promises, the one who satisfies spiritual hunger and offers eternal life. Additionally, fasting enhances prayer by creating a state of humility and dependence, conditions that make the heart more receptive to the impressions of the Holy Spirit. This heightened sensitivity facilitates discernment of God's voice allowing the believer to receive direction, comfort, and revelation more clearly. In moments of fasting and prayer, many believers report experiencing a greater closeness to God as daily distractions are minimized, providing fertile ground for spiritual and personal growth. The strengthening of faith through fasting and prayer also manifests in the ability to face and overcome trials. By relying solely on God during fasting, Believers are reminded of divine power over life's circumstances, strengthening their confidence in God's sovereignty and love. This process refines faith, transforming it into a living and active confidence that transcends human understanding and empowers individuals to navigate life's storms with peace and determination. Fasting, combined with prayer, also has a profound impact on intercessory life expanding the believer's ability to stand in the gap for others. By fasting, the believer sheds dependence on earthly pleasures and needs, redirecting focus and energy to the spiritual realm, 
where the battle against temptations and life's challenges is fought. The act of fasting, when accompanied by prayer, demonstrates total surrender to God's will, expressing unwavering faith in the Creator's ability to provide, guide, and intervene in the believer's life. This practice serves as a physical reminder of humanity's need for God, not only for physical sustenance, but more importantly for spiritual and emotional sustenance. By temporarily giving up food, one of the most basic desires, the believer opens up to receive the bread of life that Jesus promises, the one who satisfies spiritual hunger and offers eternal life. Additionally, fasting enhances prayer by creating a state of humility and dependence, conditions that make the heart more receptive to the impressions of the Holy Spirit. This heightened sensitivity facilitates discernment of God's voice, allowing the believer to receive direction, comfort and revelation more clearly. In moments of fasting and prayer, many believers report experiencing a greater closeness to God as daily distractions are minimized, providing fertile ground for spiritual and personal growth. The strengthening of faith through fasting and prayer also manifests in the ability to face and overcome trials. By relying solely on God during fasting, believers are reminded of divine power over life circumstances, strengthening their confidence in God's sovereignty and love. This process refines faith, transforming it into a living and active confidence that transcends human understanding and empowers individuals to navigate life's storms with peace and determination. Fasting, combined with prayer, also has a profound impact on intercessory life, expanding the believer's ability to stand in the gap for others. The faithful spiritually unite with the sufferings and struggles of those for whom they pray, participating in a form of spiritual solidarity that transcends physical barriers. This act of sacrificial love is a powerful testimony of Christian compassion, reflecting the heart of God for the needy and afflicted. When we talk about the power of fasting linked to prayer, we are entering sacred territory, a practice that brings us closer to the heart of God. Just imagine, by foregoing our physical comfort while fasting, we are telling the Father that there is something or someone we consider more important than our basic needs. This renunciation speaks loudly in the heavens. It's as if every moment of hunger felt is transformed into a silent prayer, a plea that ascends directly to the throne of grace, laden with sincerity and urgency that only the Spirit can translate. And here, my brothers and sisters, there is an incomparable beauty to fasting. We are not just abstaining from food. We are feeding on something much more substantial and eternal. We are feasting on the presence of God, strengthening ourselves in faith and spirit. This intimate communion that develops in fasting and prayer is the fertile ground where miracles can sprout. When we empty ourselves of ourselves, God has the space to work wonders in us and through us. Fasting, my dear ones, is a key that unlocks doors in the spiritual realm. When we fast, we are not simply changing our diet, we are changing our spiritual direction. We are signaling to heaven that we are seriously seeking divine intervention, that we are ready to fight in spiritual battles, not with carnal weapons, but with the powerful weapons of faith and prayer. And when this happens, oh glory, we are enlisting in the army of intercessors that God uses to bring heaven to earth. But see, fasting is not just about asking, it's also about giving. We are giving of ourselves our time, our energy, our comfort as an offering to the Lord. And there is something deeply transformative in this act of giving. By standing in the gap for others, we are practicing the purest form of love, Agape love, the sacrificial love that Jesus demonstrated on the cross. This is the love that does not seek its interests, but empties itself and pours itself out for others. Each prayer accompanied by fasting becomes a powerful act of spiritual warfare. We are indeed engaging in battle for those who cannot fight for themselves. 
whether it's for a friend facing a serious illness, a family member in addiction, or an entire nation oppressed under the yoke of oppression. No matter the scale, every time we fast and pray, we are exercising our authority in Christ and releasing spiritual shockwaves that have the power to break chains, tear down strongholds, and open doors for the light of the gospel to shine in the darkness. And here, dear ones, is the mystery and wonder of intercession. By identifying with the suffering of others and by carrying their burdens in prayer, we are, in a sense, imitating Christ. He who became man and dwelt among us knows every pain, every tear, every cry of despair. When we fast and pray, we are following in his footsteps, extending his hands of healing, comfort and liberation through our own lives. We are transformed in this process, becoming more sensitive, more compassionate, more like Jesus. It's no wonder then that fasting and prayer have such an impact on the life of intercession. They shape us, remake us, and prepare us to be effective instruments in the hands of God. Through this practice, we are purified, our faith is increased, and our ability to hear the voice of the Lord is tuned. We become more attentive to His directions and more aligned with His will. It's a process of spiritual alignment that enables us to intercede more precisely and effectively. And my brothers and sisters, when we rise to intercede when we fast and pray with this spirit of sacrificial love, we are participating in something eternal. We are weaving golden threads in the tapestry of God's kingdom, participating in His redemptive work in the world. What a privilege it is to be invited to be part of this celestial melody. I encourage each one of you to not underestimate the power of fasting and prayer. They are powerful tools given by God for the edification of His church and the expansion of His kingdom. When we fast and pray, we are aligning ourselves with God's eternal purposes. We are participating in the spiritual battle that defines the destiny of souls and nations. Through this surrender, we discover true freedom and the true power that comes from living not for ourselves, but for the one who loved us first and called us to a greater purpose. Finally, my dear ones, may each one of us commit again to this journey of fasting and prayer. May we see beyond the temporary, beyond the physical, and see with spiritual eyes the difference we can make. May every sacrifice, every moment of hunger, every tear shed in prayer be an act of worship, a sweet perfume to the Lord. And through our faithful intercession, may we see the power of God moving in extraordinary ways in our lives, in our families, in our churches, and our world. And fasting, allied with prayer, is a profound expression of seeking God, a burning desire to know and experience more deeply the presence and power of the Creator. This practice not only nourishes the believer's spiritual life, but also enables them to become a channel of blessings for others, transforming them into instruments of love, peace and justice in the hands of God. Thus, fasting and prayer together constitute a fundamental pillar in every believer's journey of faith, providing a path to closer communion with God and a life marked by active and transformative faith. In Christianity, this ancient practice not only follows in the footsteps of prominent biblical figures, but also serves as a channel for deepening the personal relationship with God allowing for introspection that can transform the heart and mind of the faithful. The New Testament continues to emphasize the importance of fasting, presenting it as a spiritual practice that, when undertaken with the right attitude, can open doors to profound and transformative religious experiences. Jesus Christ, at the beginning of his earthly ministry, fasted for 40 days in the desert, facing temptations and preparing for the mission ahead. This act of fasting by Jesus not only underscores his humanity, but also establishes a model for believers, emphasizing that fasting accompanied by prayer is essential for overcoming spiritual trials 
and for equipping oneself with divine service. Beyond the aspect of purification and renunciation, fasting serves as a tangible reminder of the brevity of earthly life and the importance of focusing on spiritual treasures. By abstaining from food, a basic need of the body, believers echo the message of Christ that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, Matthew 4-4. This temporary detachment from the material helps cultivate a spirit of gratitude and contentment in God, realigning the priorities and values of the believer with those of the kingdom of God. Fasting also fosters a unique solidarity among believers, a sense of community and shared purpose. As individuals and groups engage in periods of fasting and prayer, this collective practice not only strengthens fraternal bonds, but also acts as a powerful reminder of the interdependence of the members of the body of Christ, encouraging one another on the path of faith, spiritual discipline and growth. Fasting, although often perceived as a personal journey of purification and communion with God, has a significant community and social dimension that cannot be overlooked. When shared within a faith community, this spiritual practice not only strengthens the bonds among its members, but also mobilizes them for altruistic action and service, reflecting the love and compassion that are fundamental to the Christian life. When community members fast together, whether in response to a crisis as an act of intercession or in seeking divine direction for the group, unique opportunities for unity and collective spiritual growth are created. The act of fasting in the community serves as a powerful reminder that despite individual differences, all share the same fundamental need for God and His guidance. This sense of shared purpose can help overcome barriers, promote mutual understanding and encourage a spirit of support and encouragement among the faithful. In addition to strengthening the community internally, fasting has the potential to expand believers' vision beyond the church walls, prompting them to engage more actively in serving others. By experiencing physical hunger, believers are reminded of the harsh realities faced by many people around the world, living in conditions of poverty and deprivation. This recognition can awaken deep compassion and motivate concrete actions of help and service. Therefore, the practice of fasting can inspire believers to engage in acts of mercy and social justice, whether it is feeding the hungry, caring for the sick, sheltering the homeless, or advocating for the oppressed. Such acts of service are not only expressions of faith in action, but also tangible reflections of God's love manifested through His people. In this context, fasting transcends its value as an individual spiritual discipline and becomes a catalyst for social and spiritual transformation within the community. In summary, the impact of fasting on the community and Christian service is multifaceted, involving both the strengthening of communal bonds and looking beyond one's own needs and desires, encouraging them to live according to the principles of the kingdom of God, where love, mercy, and justice prevail. By embracing fasting as a community practice, believers may discover new depths in their faith, experience the power of collective prayer, and become agents of change and hope in a world that desperately needs the redeeming love of Christ. In this way, fasting is a practice rich in meaning and purpose, offering believers an opportunity to detach from the distractions and demands of everyday life to more fully concentrate on their relationship with God. By fasting, the faithful enter into a sacred space of vulnerability, openness and receptivity to the divine, allowing God to speak to their hearts in ways that may be obscured by the noise and busyness of daily life. The journey of fasting challenges us to look beyond physical needs and desires, inviting us to dive deeper into the search for God and the understanding of His will for our lives. 
Through fasting, we are called to examine our hearts, purify our intentions, and reaffirm our commitment to a way of life that reflects the truth, justice, and divine love. This path is not easy, but it is richly rewarding, offering us a renewed sense of purpose, a strengthened faith, and a deeper connection with the divine. Furthermore, the practice of fasting has the potential to strengthen our bonds with the faith community, encouraging us to share our spiritual journeys, support one another in prayer, and unite in acts of service and compassion. This communal aspect of fasting highlights the beauty of the Church as the body of Christ, where each member plays a vital role in building up one another and manifesting the Kingdom of God on earth. Fasting is an expression of our total dependence on God, a reminder that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, Matthew 4-4. By fasting, we affirm our faith in the God who provides, the God who listens, and the God who answers the depths of our souls. As we journey on this spiritual path, we discover that the true power of fasting lies not in what we give up, but in what we gain, a closer presence of God in our lives, a deeper understanding of His love, and a renewed capacity to live in a way that honors Him. Moreover, the practice of fasting has the potential to strengthen our bonds with the faith community, encouraging us to share our spiritual journeys, support one another in prayer, and unite in acts of service and compassion. I invite each one of you to make fasting a spiritual practice in your journey of faith, whether seeking a deeper intimacy with God, seeking guidance for decisions, or desiring a more personal form of worship. Fasting can be a valuable instrument of spiritual growth. I encourage you to share your experiences, reflections, and discoveries about fasting in the comments. How has fasting been part of your spiritual life? What impact has it had on your relationship with God and with others? We have reached the end of our video, and I hope you like it. If you're looking for inspiration, knowledge, and spiritual connection, don't let this opportunity pass you by. Subscribe to our channel now, leave your like and comment to strengthen our community. And if you want to help us continue sharing religious stories that touch hearts, become a channel member. Together we can make a difference and strengthen our spiritual journey. We're counting on you. We've left the link in the description of this video so you can become a member today. Continue watching videos about the history of the Bible. I will leave two recommendations here on the screen. God bless you. We will get to the next video.